Hi, this is Julie Sunny, and you're listening to the Caretaker Journeys podcast. Welcome to today's meaningful conversation. I'm your host, Carol Leatham. My guest today is Julie Sunny, and Julie writes about finding hope amid life's real struggles. Boy, do I need this today, guys. Her own struggles include enduring multiple miscarriages and caregiving for her adult daughter who suffers with uh, significant intellectual disabilities. Julie's written a book that we're going to talk about today called Sometimes I Forget, 60 Reminders of Hope for Your Hard Days. She's also written a book called Everyday Praise Walking for Greater Peace. She's written devotions for Proverbs 31 Ministries, The Guidepost, and other organizations. And you can read and follow her blog, and you should, at juliesunny.com. And that will be in the show notes today. Julie and her husband, Dave, uh, David, sorry. Julie and her husband, David, are parents of three grown sons and their daughter. They live with their daughter in rural Northeast Iowa. And I just want to welcome you to the show today, Julie. It's such a joy to be here, Carol. Thanks. Oh, so rural. I love when people tell me where they live. They live in rural Northeast Iowa. That's because nobody knows where the little towns are in Iowa. (laughs) (laughs) Or even the big ones sometimes. Well, I've never, that is one state I've never been to. Um, And somehow it makes me feel like it's all farms and animals and crops and stuff like that. So do you live on a farm? We do, do sort of. Uh, we live on a hobby farm. Yeah, we have. It's all put into prairie now, so we don't actively farm it. But okay, um, yeah, we live on fifty-five acres and uh, built a house here a few years ago. My husband retired mm. oh, three, four years ago, so now we we live close to where he retired. We actually have. We grew up. Well, we didn't grow up. We <laughs> most of our married life we spent in state parks because my husband was a state park ranger. Wow, in the, okay. In Iowa, so so we moved around from state park to state park. So our kids were raised in state parks, and um, and I grew up on a dairy farm. So the rural part was very important to me. It my always word. has been. So we just kind of continued that. But Iowa is a, a quite a mix, and most people don't realize that. But on the eastern side, where I was born and raised, is very hilly. It's along the Mississippi River. Okay. Lots of wooded hills. Dairy farms are more prominent than anything else, you know, okay. any other type of farming. And then you go kind of the middle section, and that's where people think, especially the north central, they think that the hogs, the corn, <laughs> that type of thing. Yeah. You go out west, and you've got the Luss Hills, which is like kind of mid grass more of a prairie type. So, so there's quite a combination. I love that. Yeah. But it all sounds rural. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of it is. Well, Des Moines is about the biggest. Most people have heard of Des Moines, but that's yeah. probably about yeah. it. Well, Maybe the Quad Cities. That's right. Uh, I'm, I'm a city girl from California. <laughs> yes. So live near Los Angeles, live near San Francisco, live near Sacramento. And I'm wow. about as rural as I've ever been <laughs> out here in Bakersfield, which is agriculture and or and oil, but it's still very cityfied. So yeah. um I don't know uh I don't know anything about rural living and uh farmer. Well, you get this way, you come visit and I'll show you. Okay, there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, Julie, I I'm so curious to know. I know you are. I know you. You blog. I've been all over your blog, and like I said, um, listeners, you should go and follow her blog because, as a caregiver, it's hard to take more than a second sometimes or a few minutes to kind of find some encouragement, which is why we're going to talk about her book. But I love that you tend to write and encourage at the same time. So you're telling us a story, mm-hmm. you're encouraging mm-hmm. us, you're pointing us to God. So how did you get started writing? That's I'm very curious about that. Yeah. I always like to know how somebody gets to this journey. I have to lift up my oldest son for that one because oh. that I, I went into this kicking and screaming. I've always been good with English, but my both my husband and I have degrees in fish and wildlife biology. So <laughs> <laughs> so it has doesn't have a whole lot to do with, with English. Um, Although we did have to do a paper now and then, but so, so I, I did not want, I was not on uh, social media. I did not want to be on social media. And my husband, my, my son, my oldest son, Daniel, he was, uh, I think he was like, I was trying to figure out the date. So I started blogging in 2011. So he would have been about 16, 17 years old. And he came to me and he said, mom, you need to start blogging. And I said, I don't want to, I don't want to be on anything. And he said, but you have so much encouragement to share people and you, you love to share, you love to encourage people. You just need to do that. Wow. Like, no, I don't want to. He said, well, tough. I'm going to set you up a WordPress, a free WordPress blog. And I think you need to do it. It's like, okay, fine. So he set it up 
he did it all himself because I didn't know what I was doing. And so I, I very hesitantly, kicking and screaming sort of, went into this, um, just started to blog. And wow. when I read the first couple, it's like, oh, these are so bad. <laughs> but I never intended it to be a devotional style, but the Lord obviously had that in mind because everything I write, yeah. I don't even read devotion. I don't, I don't read much for dev- once in a while, but I'm not a big, you know, I got to have the latest devotional and I, you know, I yeah. do that for my morning. I just, I, I open my Bible in the morning. That's mm-hmm. normally what I do. Uh, not to say there's anything wrong with devotionals. There's not because I write them. You know? <laughs> right. Right. But it's not, it wasn't my thing, but yet the Lord must have known that people needed that from me. So pretty much everything I write in my blog posts too, they really are a devotional style where um, I have to, I, I like you, Carol, we talked earlier, you know, we need to be authentic. Yes. That's so important because it, it doesn't do me a lick of good if I'm going to try to encourage people, but am not willing to share some of the tough stuff. No, I'm not saying air all of your dirty laundry and every little nitty gritty thing that happens, but, um, but to be authentic with oh, what our yes. lives look like and the hard parts of it. But then I'm a firm believer that I'm doing nobody any good if that's where I leave them because Absolutely. everybody has plenty of that. Yes. Um, so I always have to leave them with hope mm-hmm. and I'm sure we'll get around to that, but that's exactly how this book came around too, was, was that whole, that whole aspect of having to, having to find hope mm. in sometimes what seems like a hopeless situation. Well, I love, I love that. And yeah, we are going to talk about that, your, this book, because I, I too was a blogger and that was exactly how I approached blogging. And this was prior to my husband's crash when um, I was still blogging every week. And I keep thinking I'll get back to it, but it, I haven't yeah. done it yet. And part of it is um, God has asked me to do some other things. And one of them is this podcast. And I am committed to being honest and I am pretty raw and trans- I'm pretty raw and authentic. And I kind of tell it how it is. I don't really sugarcoat much. Um, gets me into trouble sometimes because <laughs> people are like, why are you in your dirty laundry? Well, I'm not trying to air dirty laundry. What I'm trying to do is say, God wants me to tell you this. Mm-hmm. because caretaking is hard. And, yeah, and people need to know they can relate with other people that oh, part of yes. the caretaker journey and par- actually part of any unexpected journey, you know, any of the, the things that we don't have planned in our life, which is most <laughs> of our life, um, whatever it is, it, we feel alone in it. Oh, yes. You yes. Know, you ask anybody and that whenever they're suffering, what are they, what's one of the first things they say is I feel alone. Yes. I cannot tell um, you how many times I get an email yeah. from somebody and they're like, oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, the foundation of my faith, which had started growing at the age of 16 and had just really progressed um, and gotten closer and closer and closer. And when everything just went chaotic in my life 10 years ago, that was the one thing that sustained me. And the second thing was finding help. So, what did your faith like? What did your faith journey look like? Um, up until the blog, when your son put you online, <laughs> you started yelling, you started encouraging us all. Yeah. You know, mine was quite probably different from yours. I, I was, I was born and raised in the church, um, went to church every Sunday, but, and knew God as sovereign and creator. And that's about the extent of, of my understanding and my relationship with the Lord at that time. I mean, I, I, I had great respect for God, mm-hmm. I'll put it that way. But, um, I didn't know how to, I didn't understand him. Well, not that we can understand God, but I didn't have a, <laughs> I didn't have a, have a, a more understand, a, a understanding that went further than just my respect and understanding of him as creator and sovereign. Yeah. So, so when tragedy struck and, and I had a good childhood, a very good childhood. I, I loved, uh, my parents loved us. I had five siblings that we, uh, we fought we fought with, but we played with, you know, yeah. and it was, it was a normal sibling relationship. Um, and it, it, not much rocked my world when, when we were younger. So when, when my world started getting rocked, I didn't know how to reconcile, um, this sovereign God mm-hmm. with, um, who I have been told is good, <laughs> um, with the tragic and bad. Yeah, that was happening in my life. And so I my faith 
you know, that when, where scripture talks about our faith being built on a firm foundation of Jesus yeah. Christ, my faith was built on how I felt and how mm. my circumstances were. And that is a, that is not a solid place to, no. to have your faith sitting on. Mm-hmm. And so I, I struggled for a number of years in within an eight, nine year time span. I had four live births, but had five miscarriages as well. Um, And a couple of those kids had disabilities. My oldest, um, who got me blogging, he has a arm that is disabled, was disabled from birth. And um, so we, we went through a lot with him trying to figure out how we could help him the best. And, and um, I had one child with some learning disabilities and then, our daughter, of course, has has pretty significant. I always say global global disabilities, which people don't quite understand that, but it means it it pretty much affects um, most of her life. She doesn't mm-hmm. have a lot of her the she doesn't have a lot of um, acute medical issues, which I'm very grateful for. So she doesn't need a feeding t- tube or a trach okay. or anything like that. So medically, she's pretty stable. She did have some anomalies that we had to address and take care of through surgeries and some things like that. But intellectually, she is 26 right now, and she is about a three-year-old Okay. Uh, in her functioning, sometimes younger, sometimes older, just depends Aww. on what, what we're asking her to do and what we're requiring of her. Uh and she's functionally nonverbal, has maybe a 10 to a dozen words that, that someone could come in and understand. We, of course, understand a lot more than that. Just right. We know her so well. But so, so yeah, so I had to, I had to go through a lot of, uh, my, my journey of faith was very roller coaster uh, when my circumstances were good and I had my live <laughs> babies and, you know, I was kind of on top of the world and, and the Lord could do no wrong. And then when, <laughs> yeah. when I suffered my next miscarriage or, 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 you know, the disabilities, then I would struggle a little bit more and question and, mm-hmm. and want to know why. And which I don't think there's, I don't, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Mm. Um, it was a requirement for me to get to right. where I am in my faith. Absolutely. And the Lord knew exactly what I needed. And I, and I can look back now and see that, that he provided, I didn't like always what he allowed <laughs> in my life. And still yeah. Don't mm-hmm. Always welcome them. Right. But, but I can look back and I can say, you know what, if, if it was any less than that, I wouldn't be where I am now in my faith. That's exactly right. Because I needed to be broken. I needed those things in my life because I was trying to do it all. I was raised on a dairy farm with boys. I knew I I could keep up with them. And by golly, I'm going to solve the world's problems. Mm -hmm. um, You know, I laugh because I don't have, we don't have a diagnosis for our daughter specifically. We don't know what is some genetic syndrome they think, Mm -hmm. but, but nobody can really figure it out. And, and it got to the point where we're, we're done poking and prodding her because yeah. it's not going to make a difference. Yeah. And, and I, I sometimes laugh about that thinking, you know, the Lord knew if I had a diagnosis, I would just research that to death and try to solve the problem. Oh my <laughs> so gosh. Because I, don't, because I don't have a diagnosis. I just have to say, all right, Lord, you know, you know, you know what we need. We'll go with it. Oh my gosh. You know, I love, I love how God meets each one of us at our point of need, at mm-hmm. our point of understanding and so what a beautiful journey that you are on. And, and I love, let's talk, let's talk about this book because your book, sometimes I forget, is 60 chapters that start with a God truth, with a God is truth. And literally each chapter, listeners, each chapter says God is, and then there's a truth about God. And each chapter includes the God is statement, the truth, a scripture, a quote, a short devotion, a prayer. And then a truth reminder. And since I got my copy, I have to tell you, Julie, I have been picking it up um, daily and I read through the table of contents and I find myself going and picking the chapter based on what I'm feeling or slash forgetting at that moment about yeah. God. And yeah. it has been, it's already dog-eared. The, mm-hmm. I've had it for a couple, uh, about a month and a half and the the binding is already starting to show where from where I keep opening it up because I feel like you have tapped into something that really ministers to me as a caregiver and I know is going to minister to our listeners. So what advice would you give someone who feels overwhelmed and Mm -hmm. alone? Because Mm -hmm. that is the thing that I come across the most. Overwhelmed is one and alone is another. And then they are almost always paired together at the same moment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it can just be um, paralyzing 
<laughs> you know, it, it really can be. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's probably the thing I would say, first of all, I'm really so, so sorry for that. If you're feeling that way, because, um, it is, it is just such a paralyzing place to be. And it, and it's, you're never, well, I shouldn't say you're never there. There's going to be times in your life where you will feel that way. And I yes. don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't know anybody who really doesn't in some circumstance, but when you have, when you're in a caretaker role, it, it's, it's exponentially more often <laughs> and probably even, um, even more intense, I would yeah. say. I would so, agree. so I'm so sorry for that. But what I would say is there's, there's a few different things. First of all is take a breath. Yes. <laughs> you know, take a beat mm -hmm. I, because what, what happens is, and I, for me, it's almost like take a beat and be quiet mm -hmm. because what I tend to do is I, first of all, I, I start get into this negative talk type thing. Mm hmm. And if I'm talking at all, it's negative. Mm -hmm. And that is not a good place to be because you're never going to get out of it then. You're going to so stay good. in that overwhelmed, alone feeling. Mm -hmm. um, is, negative talk is from the devil. Mm -hmm. I mean, Satan will loves it when we get into that mode. And I am a, I never used to be that way. I used to be a very positive, uplift, up, up person, upbeat person. And I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm praying, Lord, just help me get that back because it, nothing used to phase me. Yeah. And, but, but I found that um, I need to I need to kind of turn that around. And so one of the things that I do is, first of all, maybe maybe just stop talking so mm -hmm. that I'm not telling myself this negative stuff. And the second, another thing that I really need to do is, um, it, when nothing else is working, like absolutely nothing, like um, my chai tea, I, I make a chai tea latte every day, um, except for Sundays, and that's my comfort drink of the day. Mm -hmm. And if that's not even working, then um, the, the thing that almost always works for me is to put on some hymn music or something, <laughs> you know, and hymns are for me are the best because they're yeah. so filled with truth and so filled mm -hmm. with scripture. Um, but some sort of a music, music is just such a ministering thing, oh, I think. Huge. And even, even if I'm in the doldrums, like, like deep, deep, I, I have, I can't hardly ignore a good hymn worship. Mm -hmm upbeat, even some, you know, they don't even have to always be worshiping him. But for me, that's, that's really ministering. But sometimes it's even just going back to just music. I, I love just, oh, just other good music, you know, I love that. I um, know. The, I know. Let me just interject something. Yeah, because no, please do. One of the things that I talk about in my book that has sustained me is I created a playlist called when yeah. life gets scary. <clears throat> and yes. I put into that playlist, all of the songs that I would keep on repeat. And when oh, something so was going crazy, I would start listening to mm -hmm. when the thing would get chaotic or when my husband would get upset or when things were just going out of control, I would put my headset in, my earphones so in, good. and I would blast the music. And sometimes I would blast it so loud that I would just, because I had to push what you're talking about, yeah. the negative talk yeah. away. So yeah. I'm so glad that you said that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, of course I would not neglect, I mean, getting in the word is important, Absolutely. but, but we can't always, um, I don't think we're always in a place to, to sit down and read a chapter mm -hmm. in scripture. And I, and I don't, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mean you shouldn't, but I mean, we're not always in a place where we feel like we can or getting anything mm. of it. But I always say, have your Bible open at least. Yeah. You know, even if you can't read a chapter, have it open, maybe read a topic or a title. <laughs> you know, I love it when they have those little, little yes. you know, titles in the, in the different passages. It's so fun to, to, sometimes that's, sometimes that's all we can do. And sometimes we can only have our Bible open and that's it. But you know what? The word is active. So Amen. just having it open, um, it ministers to us whether we realize it or not, honestly. So, <laughs> that's so, so funny because my listeners are sitting here going, oh my gosh, Julie and Carol, did you prepare this? Because, <laughs> because that's, <laughs> I, for, for the first five years of my husband's diagnosis, I read the same five chapter, five verses oh, wow. in James one, James yeah. one, one through five, which there's a whole story behind those words, because when you're struggling, those are not the most comforting words to find. Right. And yet I found comfort there. And it was not until January of this year in one of the early podcasts 
where I talked about a book that Mary DeMuth wrote called 90 Days. It's a brisk yeah. read through the Bible in 90 days. Yeah. And it was the first time I sat down and I just read through the scripture, the nice. entire scripture in 90 days. Because God, and God gave me the time in those few months to do it because I have not been able to get back to it on a regular basis. And I'm right. kind of back to my picking, like you're talking about the picking and choosing. Yeah. And I think we can start feel guilty yeah. when we're oh, not, yeah. you know, when we're not yeah. reading, you know, the daily Bible. And, and it's not that we're not reading it. It's just, I, my brain can only absorb so much. Yes. And yet I still have this close relationship with God. Yeah. 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 I, I, everybody, it, it's different and it's different in the season. It's different day to day even. Mm -hmm. And for caretakers off, it's different hour to hour often. Um, but I, if we have it there and if we have it open as yeah. we walk by and we glance and we see some, you know, some people really like the put it, posting scriptures on the mirrors and things like that. Mm -hmm. I have done that in different seasons. Uh, when my kids were young and I wanted to work on memorizing with them, I did, you know, and, and we, we would drive together and memorize. Um, I have not, that isn't where I'm at right now. It's mm -hmm. not uh, something that's helpful for me right now. So I don't do it, but I do, my Bible is always on the table and usually it's open. And, um, sometimes in the mornings when like today I was telling Carol, it didn't go as I had hoped today. <laughs> um, so it was kind of funny that we we're going to mm -hmm. do this podcast on today when, when it kind of was, uh, there was a bunch of upheaval, but, um, I didn't get the reading I normally like to do in the morning, but I got I got a sentence. I got yeah. a, you know, I got, I got a, what I needed for the mm -hmm. day. The Lord knew what I needed for the day and, and delivered that. So, so the music is huge. The, the stopping the negative talk. The other thing, and I know we'll touch on this later because I know how you end your podcast, but um, <laughs> is to, is to do something that is really um, refreshing to your, yes. to, to your body, to your mind, to your soul. That's, 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 that it has nothing to do with, your caretaking or anything, right. you know, um, it's something you do deliberately to yes. take care of you. We have to find <laughs> those things and it doesn't have to be long and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be, um, um, p always planned. Right. And everybody, I know some people are so like, they barely have a minute to themselves, mm -hmm. but if you can find something, even for, you know, yeah. lock yourself in the bathroom for a few minutes. Yeah, no. Or I said I'm... in the past, you know, I know some people, especially with children with behavior issues or autism, and they, they can't hardly even leave them alone. You know, if you can just, if you have to, you know, um, put in a, an extra show that they mm -hmm. watch, or um, and I don't mean this in a, in a mean or bad way, but sometimes to protect them and to protect us, maybe even you have to lock the door for five minutes or 10 minutes, um, mm -hmm. their door even, um, just to give you, to give you yourself time to refresh and to mm -hmm. reset, um, and, and do whatever that five minutes is that's, that's nurturing to you. Yeah. Um, for, for me, it's outside, almost anything outside is refreshing mm -hmm. and renewing to me. So I yeah. do a lot of, a lot of that type of care. Um, but those are some biggies, I think. Yeah. And you've kind of gone into my next question. <clears throat> Sorry. You've kind of let, no, no, this is perfect <laughs> because I love when it flows because my listeners know I don't edit. I don't even really, I, some, I prepare, but then I also prayerfully go through the copy as we're yeah. talking because I feel like God, the one thing I want is there's always something in here for somebody out there. Yes. And I always am praying, okay, who is the one that is listening to this conversation who needs what you and I are talking about? And the fact that you and I are paralleling so much without really even knowing each other or even yeah, having this no. conversation, um, a lot of the messaging is the same. And it's what they're going to hear me say. And I love that. So what are the blessings and the lessons that you have learned from mm -hmm. your trials, especially with this, with your daughter who you mm -hmm. love and has mm -hmm. these severe disabilities? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say probably the first thing, well, there's two that sort of go in tandem, but the first is, is maybe not something I've learned, but what the Lord has done okay. has grown my faith so much. Okay. I am such a, um, different person, better person <laughs> than I was. I'm much more compassionate, much more empathetic. Mm -hmm. uh, my faith is much more grounded where it needs to be grounded on instead of my <laughs> circumstances or feelings. Uh, so, so that was huge. I mean, yeah. huge. When I look back at the person I was 30 years ago, it's like, ugh, I'm so, so thankful, Lord. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to go through it again, but I'm so thankful. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is patience. 
uh, patience is not one of my strong, <laughs> still not one of my my strong suits, but I am a much more patient person than I used to be. Uh, and that's just because I have to be, I don't mm-hmm. have a choice. Um, my daughter moves at her, <laughs> at her speed. Uh, I also, I, I also have a son who, who moves at his speed and, and he doesn't even, he doesn't even have, uh, what we would call disabilities, but, but yeah. he is, um, he's, you know, that our children, they, they have a way of doing that, um, of just bringing out sometimes what we think might be the worst, but also the best in us too. <laughs> and so patience was a huge one, you know, it, it, able to see and, um, enjoy the little things of life. Yes. To, yes. To, to slow down and, and do some of that. Like Rachel, she just delights like raindrop on her nose. You know, she gets excited about that. When the sun or the moon comes out, she's, she's just ecstatic. And it's okay. It happens about every night, you know, really, (laughs) but, but you know, it's like, it's the first time and it's so sweet and so special. One of the biggies is, um, how her love, how unconditionally loving she is. Mm. And, and this has been, I mean, this has been hugely convicting to me and, and I've, I've been transparent in even, I think in the book, I might have even told the story. If not, it'll be coming in some book, I'm sure. But, um, you know, she just, she, she'll go up to strangers and, and hug them. And it doesn't matter if they, if they're homeless, if they stink, if they, their clothes are tattered, if they um, just rolled around in the hog lot, you know, yeah. <laughs> to, her, to her, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. You know, she loves, she loves people. And mm. that is a very convicting. And the way she worships, you know, she just worships. She loves Jesus. She can't say it. Um, she does have an approximation for Jesus and she talks a lot about home and points upward, which means heaven basically. Wow. Um, yeah. So, chills. so she loves that. <laughs> yes. Yes. And she literally, be, I got chills when you said that. Yeah. It's just, it's so, um, she's so freeing with how she worships. If, if in the middle of church, if someone says something about Jesus or heaven that re- resounds with her, you know, her hand, her, her hands go up and she's making mm. noise, you know, and, um, and I'm not always that free with, with my worship. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that's, that's convicting. So yeah. So in a number, a number of things that, that she has enriched our life with. Wow. You, you, you've touched on this a couple of times. This is another place where our, our journeys parallel and our, and our thought processes and our beliefs, our core beliefs are. And that's in when you, when you talk about the joy doesn't come from our circumstances and really how we feel and what's going on is not what dictates my relationship to the Lord. And for mm-hmm. me, almost immediately when my life fell apart, um, 10 years ago, when my husband began to struggle. I turned to that place of, okay, God, you're still here. You're still going to talk. And there's mm-hmm. some incredible things that had happened leading up to the crash, what we call the crash, the where it finally sure. became clear. God had done some pretty crazy things. And I talk about those in my book, but he was showing me even before that my my joy and my love for him is where it has to be grounded. And if I ever find myself getting overwhelmed, it's probably because I'm focusing on the circumstances and not on him. And so that's so cool. The other thing I want to talk about um, in these last few minutes is people continue, even today, people continue to ask me the same question after 10 years. And the question is, my husband was a pastor. He was this administrative genius. He was a loving, giving, caring person. And they say this, they always ask me this question, how could God let this happen to Bill? And so I found this in your book. What would you say to someone who says, how can a good God, because this is the other one, um, how could a good and just God allow some of the horrific and unfair things yep. that happened in the world. And by the way, I do not believe that my, my husband's mental health is a, is a direct cause from God. So let me just preface that right quick, because um, I don't know how you're going to answer the question, but I'm very yeah. curious to know how, what you would answer to that question. Yeah, that is a loaded question you <laughs> threw into my court. Thank you, Carol. No. <laughs> Yeah, I no, tell you, it's, it's actually what I wrestled with uh, when when the 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 tough stuff of life began yes. to hit. Because, like I said, I knew God as as sovereign and creator. Well, and and you hear this, you know, if either God is sovereign and not good, yes, or not always good, or He's always good 
and not sovereign enough to do anything about it. <laughs> you know, I hear those two two things. Well, they forget that that the and it's the reason it's it's a big part of the way why I wrote the book the way I wrote the book. God is perfect in so many aspects. Um and and infinitely so. Mhm. And so when we start looking at his attributes, if we look at his sovereignty or his goodness separately, that's when the questioning um, begins. Because, Mm -hmm. yes, if God was only sovereign um, and not also perfectly good, then it it would be scary. It'd be horribly scary because... Mm -hmm. If he's sovereign, he's controlling everything that happens, right? Mm-hmm. So, so how to reconcile that? We have to look at all of who God is. So, if God is God is perfectly sovereign and perfectly good, but He's also perfectly infinite and perfectly, uh, He knows everything, mm-hmm. and He knows everything that was happened in the past and everything that's coming in the future, and He's already in the future, in fact. Yes. So, and He's He's incomprehensible. Like we cannot understand Him. Mm. So, but we think we can because, because he created us as creator, because he created us in his image, we have elements, um, we reflect that image. Mm -hmm. And so there's aspects of us, um, that, that we think, Mm -hmm. um, we are more like, more that like him understand. than we are. <laughs> yes, yes. And that we can, but sin has, sin has so affected yes. that. Plus we're not God. So we never would be like, you know, we're, we're his creation, not, not mm-hmm. equal to him. Um, so we have to understand his, his perfect nature in all of the facets yeah. to be able to wrestle with this. Because if I could understand God, then he's a mighty little God <laughs> because my mind is, a. Mighty Mind. little mind. <laughs> yeah, we're finite. He's infinite. <laughs> right. So, so how can we think that we can understand mm-hmm. what is what is going to be good for us? Mm-hmm. Now, I don't think the Lord looks at the death of a baby or disability as something good, but I think the Lord allows those things in our mm-hmm. life because he know he will bring some good out of them. Mm-hmm. Now we aren't always going to know what that is because Absolutely. we cannot see the future and we right. we haven't been a thousand years in the past. Yeah. So we don't know what it all takes. When I look back on my journey, I now see I can see a lot of why the Lord allowed what he did in my life. Mm. At the time, I couldn't it didn't seem nothing seemed good about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I, where we fall, where we fail when we do this whole thing of um, how can a good God allow such tragic circumstances is we fail to, we think we can understand who God is. Right. And and we have expectations of what this good should look like. It's our expectations <laughs> it's that our causes expe- so much anxiety. Yes. It's our expectations of how we feel like life should be living. It's how yes. we feel like God. And I was listening to someone talk over the weekend um, on a podcast because I love I love to listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. I love podcasting and I love to listen. And this person was talking about how um, we get into trouble when we start trying to understand God and think we understand God, think we know how he thinks, think we know how he... We actually start putting ourselves almost in God's shoes yes. and making choices and decisions. And, and, and we let our feelings dictate oh, how. Absolutely. And one of the things that I discovered on my birthday in May, a few months ago, was that God brought me back to the point of one of the greatest pains in my life as a child. And mm. he brought me back to a location that represented some of the people who had created those pains. Mm -hmm. And then he asked me to write those pains on a rock and bury them in that field that represented. I couldn't go back to the people. And and yet this was me telling God, I don't need to understand why this happened, but I'm giving this to you and I'm leaving it here in this field at your feet, because I like the person that I am today. Yes. And part of those experiences, even my husband's mental health, um, my, my therapist, cause I do have a therapist and sure. every caregiver should have a therapist. 
um, because even if it's just to help you process. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so my therapist actually told me that he was so proud of me one time. He told me, I'm so proud of you because you have taken this and you have grown emotionally, you have grown spiritually. Yeah. And I think that's so critical. So, so critical. You know, we want the comfort. Yes. We want the comfort. And that's, that's where our full, fo- our focus is in our, in our human nature is, is after comfort, but the Lord's not after, that's not his highest. For us. <laughs> no, you know, it's his not. His highest prior- priority for us is to make it, make us most more like him, mm. more Christ-like and to have us with him for eternity. Yes. So if those are his prime things, you know, the, the, the discomfort that we have, you know, I believe God, it pains God. I mean, he, he wept when Lazarus died. Oh, you know? yes. Um, there's, there's times throughout scripture where we see that um, those things are painful to him, but he knows what's even more painful. Mm, yes. And we don't, we don't always see that. And if, if we can, if we can surrender those expectations mm. that are based on our comfort and our understanding and place those expectations more as anticipations of what God is going to yeah. do in our life. Uh, that makes a world of difference in, in handling the, the next unexpected thing that comes <laughs> our life. Oh, and gosh. I, know, I know you're caregiving um, as well for your mom. And, and I went through that a, per- a couple year period. Uh, both my parents passed within four months of each other last year. Wow. And it was a, incredibly difficult and it made absolutely no sense because my mom died first and my dad was the one who was, um, becoming more debilitated with mental, mm. mental il- illness and dementia and um, just frail health. And my mom was his caretaker. And then she died four months before him or three and a half months before him and it made absolutely no sense, you know, wow. just threw our whole lives into turmoil because now what do we do with dad? And, um, uh, and I still don't understand it. To right. me, it still makes no sense. Right. But I was much in a much better place of saying, I don't understand, Lord. But I know you're good. <laughs> yeah. I know you're sovereign, and I know somehow, some way, this is the best, yeah. and this is what you're going to bring good out of this. Oh, um, and yeah. I can do that now because I've walked through. He's he's led me through so much, and I've seen mm-hmm. his faithfulness in his hand, and I and because I know um, his character, oh, I know yes. he can't be otherwise but good. He can't Cannot. be otherwise but loving. He can't mm-hmm. be otherwise but sovereign. And mm-hmm. and then we just have to surrender our understanding and say, well, I don't get it, Lord, but Oh my gosh. We and are. we I think Julie, you and I could have a we could probably <laughs> talk about this forever because we the for my book, my book is written around that scripture in James that we talked about. Yeah. That I brought up. And there's a scripture in there where it says, Consider it all joy when you encounter various trials. It doesn't say if. It right. says when, because when. every single one of us is going to encounter troubles. And that you morning, I read that scripture the morning after I left my husband in a psychiatric hospital mm-hmm. after a very chaotic few days full of fear and mm-hmm. frustration and anger. And and I remember God speaking very clearly to me. And he said, Carol, why do you think that you're going to go through life with no trials and no yeah. It says right here, when, not if. Yes. And that was an eye-opening for me because I think so many people go through life thinking that when things are going well, God is blessing us and we're in good standing. And when things are not going well, then we are not, we're somehow we're not doing. And I actually have, um, tomorrow morning, I am actually recording a two-part series that I don't know when it's going to air. So you'll just have to keep watching for it with a pastor friend of mine. And he and I are going to unpack the question of yeah. suffering from a biblical yeah. perspective. And That's I great. have, we, uh, we have, I have seen the notes and I am so excited because what I'm seeing is that God has given me a glimpse of, of, of just how much he loves me and that I need to focus on that, not the circumstances. Yeah. Oh, that's and the exactly. circumstances, because yeah. if we focus on the circumstances, Julie, don't we think, oh, God must not love me because look at how messed up my life is. We look at him as a vending machine God. Oh, I love that. And I, I mean, we put in the right coins, right? We do the right things and he's going to, he's going to 
kick out the goodies, the oh blessings. Oh my gosh! And and that's that's where I was back when I first started struggling uh, with my faith and and with the the circumstances God was allowing. That's that's exactly where my faith was. He was very much a, a mm. vending machine God, and um, to me, uh, and that's not who He is, thankfully. Oh. And we have to. That's where that whole surrendering. Um, comes in the yeah. surrendering our knowledge and surrendering our understanding. Oh, my and gosh. That's, that's the whole reason I wrote the book because yeah. um, because I I was struggling. I had my eyes on my daughter's future, and that's mm-hmm. something that is a very terrifying thing to me because uh, because I she's functionally nonverbal. You know, if yeah. we place her in a home, um, who's going to care for her? Who's going to love her? Mm-hmm. Who's going to care enough to try to figure out what she means when yeah. she can't say it? Um, what if someone abuses her? We nobody yeah. knows it until her behavior starts to mm-hmm. you know change, and then is someone going to care enough to do anything about it? So those are real fears of mine, and mm. I was I was just kind of lamenting the whole fact of of that and of who she is, and in, in a blog post, and like I told you before, I always <laughs> have to end in hope. So then I'm I'm like I got to find hope. I got to find hope. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I know. And And I I started just listing all these things I knew about the Lord. And Mm. my, did that minister to me as well? You know, Mm. I I forget Lord that you were sovereign and and that you do control it all. Mm -hmm. And I forget that you're loving and you love her so much more than I do. And I forget that you're infinite and you're already in her future. Mm. You already got it all figured out. Um, And so I just started listing a few of those. And from that was born a book. um, Wow. Well, as a caretaker, I like Okay, I need short, quick reads that yes. pack a spiritual truth and a punch. And and friends, listeners, this book does just that. It is currently, I have a stack of books sitting next to my chair where I do my reading that um, I go to when I'm overwhelmed, when I don't know what to do, and I need music isn't, you know, music is is there as well, but I also read. And yeah. your book is currently on the top of my pile of two reads when I feel overwhelmed. So I encourage you, I'll put the link in the show notes, I encourage you to pick up the copy today, because it is, it is just the most beautiful 60 chapter packed it just tells truth filled book. And so I'm excited for that. So Julie, how can people stay connected to you? I know you talk about your blog um, through your website. If if I put yeah. the website in there in the show notes. Yeah, then... that's great. JulieSunny.com is is kind of the hub. Okay. I, I am on all the socials. So you can okay. find me there if if you don't don't actually want to go to a website. But do you have yeah, links? I would, I would... Do you have links in the website to your show to I your... do. Okay. Yes. There's so what I'll do is I'll me. just put a link to your website and I'll put a link to your author page on Amazon oh, in the show you. notes. And yeah, so they can go right there to get your books, both of them. Perfect. I haven't, I haven't ordered the second one yet, but boy, I yeah. love the first one. Um, and, um, and then I'll also put a link to your website so they can find your blog. Wonderful. Thank and you. you should follow her. Um, listeners, I just encourage you to do that. I encourage you to go to right now today, go pick up a copy of, of her book. And, I like to close out every show by asking my guests the same question. You know where I'm going with this because we've talked kind of a little bit about this. I believe that we as caretakers must take care of ourselves or we cannot take care of anyone else. And I try every day to at least do one deliberate self-care activity. Sometimes it's walking outside barefoot and smelling my smelling my lemon tree, which is in bloom right now. Mm. Just go walk out there across the grass and just smell the fragrance Mm -hmm. of the lemon. Um, And so Julie, what are you, and if you tell me you have to do it, what are you (laughs) going to do in the next 24 hours to take care of you? Well, this is going to, you probably haven't heard this one yet. (laughs) (laughs) I've heard some good ones. So yeah, I can't wait. I love, this is the strangest thing. I love to split wood with an axe. Like okay. Split it's to me, it, it it's exercise. It's just, I don't have to think about things. I get to, you know, whack something hard. <laughs> and my some- kids actually bought me a really nice axe for Christmas, which is really funny. <laughs> and so <laughs> later on, it's like 95 or hundred degree index here today. So I probably wait till, you know, six o'clock or so and, and go out and do a little bit of that. 
Yeah, I might combine it with a walk, but because I do love to walk as well. But I yeah. love that. <laughs> love that. I love that so much. I'm gonna have these visions all of a sudden <laughs> this evening. I'm gonna have this vision of you out since I can see you and my <laughs> listeners can't. I'm gonna have this vision of you out there, you know, swinging your axe and and chopping firewood. So that's so cool. Yeah, I should send you a picture. <laughs> oh please, please have somebody take a picture and send it to me. I love that so much. Well, thank you, uh, Julie, for joining us today I and encouraging the listeners, the caregiver, especially the caregivers who are listening. I'm going to put all your links in the show notes. And I just want to tell you as a listener how much I appreciate you. Our podcast is a little over six months old, and I'm just amazed we're, we're hitting goals and and all kinds of things that I didn't know existed for podcasts. I wasn't paying attention. And all of a sudden, I'm starting to get emails from people going, congratulations, you've hit this goal. And I'm like, wow. what does this even mean? And I think that is because there are 55 million of us out there. Yeah. And um, I appreciate each one of you who listens. And you know, we can get we can our days can be hard and we can get caught up in so many different emotions, fear, exhaustion. Julie and I've talked about a few of those. And for me, we can start to feel isolated, alone. You know, we talked about that as too, that too. But you know, the Caretaker's Journey podcast and the ministry exist to let you know that you are not alone. You are loved. You are seen. And you are one of 55 million. I am one of 55 million. Julie is one of 55 million caretakers in the world. So right there, you're not alone. If you would like to know more about my personal caretaking journey, the links to my website, social media, and my book. Are you ready to find joy when life gets messy? <laughs> we'll be in the show notes as well. I will be back next week for another meaningful conversation about the caretaker's journey. And until then, it's all about them.